Well, is God transforming lives beyond the four walls of the church? Brian Horton stops by to share his music, as well as talk about how God is setting people free in the most unlikely of places. If you're enjoying Table Talk, be sure to comment, subscribe. Remember to click that notification bell to stay up to date on all of our latest posts. Well, many of you may recognize today's guest from his viral video of doing worship music in the New York subway system. Yes, the New York subway system. We're excited to have him here with us today. Here he is singing a medley of It's Always Been You and something about the name of Jesus, Ryan Horton. Thank you, Lord. Every single knee must bow. Every single tongue must say There has never been a better name Than Jesus Oh Jesus It's always been you It'll always be you It's always been you, it'll always be you. No other name, no other name, no other name but our name. Oh, Jesus, be praised. Oh, we say, no other name, no other name, no other name. Just sing this out if you know it. Here we go. There's something about the name Jesus. Yeah. Something about the name Jesus. It is the sweetest name I know. Oh, how I love the name Jesus. Oh, how I love the name Jesus. It is the sweetest Away, 
yeah, 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 yeah. But there's something, uh, there's absolutely something. Imagine what's possible and where the Lord would lead you if you said yes to his directions. That's exactly what happened to Ryan. He found himself being used by God in the most unlikely of places. Take a look. I can feel the ground is shaking. Something in the air is changing. Oh, oh, oh. Turn your eyes upon you. You know, he didn't set out to create a street worship movement, but God is continually using it to change lives. And Ryan is here to tell me and the ladies a little bit more about that. Welcome, Ryan. Hello, Hi. everybody. Hello. So Hi. glad to be here, ladies. Here you are. You're not in the subway. 
Right. You're not on New York Times. You're here on Joni Table Talk. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. You know, I was scrolling through and saw you doing one of them. It so touched me. Um, really special what God's called you to do. Not, not everybody can do that. Um, let's go back to how'd you come to know the Lord? Yeah, so I uh, grew up in a Christian home most of my life and was uh, raised in a, a home with a pastor as my dad. And uh, so anyways, I really had my encounter with the Lord probably in my early 20s. Uh, I was really struggling with a difficult situation in my life and um, the Lord really met me. Uh, I was telling somebody, it was one of those encounters in my bedroom. Tell us um, about what happened. We want to hear about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we want to hear all the details. <laughs> we love God encounters. Yeah, They're yeah. our favorite. So, uh, yeah, I was, I was really just kind of doing my thing. And for some reason, I was flipping through uh, some music that I was playing on a stereo, and this worship song came on. And again, I'd been raised in the church, so it wasn't anything out of the ordinary. And for some reason, the Holy Spirit just arrested my heart like I'd never had happen before. I began to just break and weep. And um, I just said, Lord, I really want to walk with you in an intimate way. I want to know you for real. Like, I don't want you to just be the God of my parents, me knowing you through that lens. But God, I want to step into something fresh with you. And I feel like the encounter for me was just a true authentic moment of surrender to the Lord. Yeah. Uh, where I said, okay, Jesus, like for real, I'm not just gonna kind of show up and do the church thing, be in the church culture, but I say yes today. Mm -hmm. Anything you want me to do, my answer is yes. And so- uh, That yeah. was your surrender moment. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, I know all of you are probably sitting here, you can remember like, I got saved when I was six years old. Mm -hmm. Like I asked Jesus to come into my heart when I was six years old. Yes, children can pray the prayer and it yes. sticks, okay? Yeah. But there's one thing to pray the prayer of salvation and say, God, forgive me, I love you, I'm sorry, thank you for dying on the cross. That's a prayer that if you haven't prayed, I want you to pray because I want to spend eternity with you, okay? But the surrender prayer is, is, is beyond that. It's saying, mm -hmm. not only do I thank you for forgiving me, but I'm saying, okay, God, yeah. here's my life. Yeah. Do what you want to do. Right. I'll go where you want me to go. Yeah. I'll be where you want me to be. And I had that moment when I was 20 years old where that was like my, my surrender moment. It's like, okay, God, you can have me. So that was your moment. Yes. And then what happened? Yeah, yeah. And then from there, um, I, I want to say it was a wilderness season. Right after that, I feel like there was some big opportunities that came up. I started traveling with a big worship artist at the time, singing on his background list. And uh, yeah, so I remember the Holy Spirit telling me, Ryan, I want you to go to this individual and tell him uh, that your time here is done. And I want you to go sit on a bench before me and make me your full-time occupation. Mm. And this was in my early 20s. And so... Um, so I said yes, and then for the next two, three years, kind of came off the platform of being in these big arenas and things of that nature, bigger churches, and just went and sat on this little bench, and he started uh, really introducing me to who he is, to the Holy Spirit, to Scripture, to uh, prayer, and kind of cultivating a prayer life and that whole deal. So yeah, it was really a wilderness season right after the encounter. It was a wilderness, but it was like an, a time of an Prep. intimacy yeah. Yeah. and preparation right. where God was getting you ready. Think right. about King David, how long did he spend out there right. with the sheep? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. in the fields. Mm -hmm. And then he, running from Saul. Yeah. Before he ever actually was king. Right. So then you became a worship leader. Right. Mm -hmm. And you're probably thinking, okay, God, this is the great thing to be doing. <laughs> yeah. You love it. Yeah. I loved it, did it um, for years inside of a local church context, full time, you know, serving the body and love the local church like crazy. Um, yeah, and so did that for a while and then he started tugging on me for what we're doing now. Okay, so what are you doing now? Tell everybody what you're doing. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we, we saw the little clip, but I'm like, right. how do you decide yeah. where you're going and that you just randomly go to these places? Some of them are dangerous places. Yeah. And so, you take your piano player, your yeah. keyboard Pioneering player. Pioneering out yeah, yeah, there. Yeah. <laughs> and your very anointed microphone. Yes. <laughs> and you just start That's singing hilarious. in the middle of the world. Yeah. 
Yeah, so I think even going back to the surrender prayer, if you were to ask me then, I would have never thought or imagined that I would be on the streets. Matter of fact, a couple of years ago, I was telling everybody, you know, I, I feel like my primary audience that I minister to is the church, um, is to believers, to strengthen them, to encourage them, and then to see the Lord now kind of just, you know, flip it 180. So what am I doing? I am obeying the Holy Spirit. He says, go to New York, go to New York. I set up keyboard and mic, and we just begin to release worship, and he comes. And what happens? Yeah, we're, we're starting to see uh, really special encounters. There are people, I feel like, that come into these environments that are already searching. They're hungry, and they're looking for somebody to meet them in the middle. And so this is why I'm so passionate about the local church even being mobilized in this season because, man, if we will go uh, into these environments Every single time, I was telling somebody else earlier today, every single time, every single city that I've been to, uh, he's given the gift of fresh tears. These are people that are hard, that don't yeah. know much about the Lord, don't have any context for Jesus, yet we start declaring his worth and his goodness and his kindness. Mm-hmm. We was in the New York subway four months ago. We started lifting up the name of the Lord, and this dude gets down on his face and lays prostrate on the subway platform and just starts weeping, didn't know yeah. God at all. Wow. Um, And so we're starting to see wild encounters break out right in these atmospheres. What about your, I don't know if Tampa, I don't know if Ybor City was the first place you went, um, but when you were there, apparently um, the crowd was really provoked to be mock you. How did, tell us about that and how did, how did you handle that and how did you push forward? Yeah, so Ybor was my first city that we went to. I'm right a couple minutes outside of Ybor, so we went down there by faith. And um, in Ybor City, that's in Florida. Yes. And I don't know, but it's kind of more like a so, party. Town. So Ybor City would be Tampa's equivalent of the Las Vegas Strip, something okay. like that. Like yeah. it's just a street filled with bars and clubs all oh. the way down. So the Lord told us to go to uh, this set up right in front of this club line. There was probably three to 400 people standing in this club line waiting to get in this club. And I told my keyboard player, this is where we're supposed to set up. He said, bro, you sure you're hearing from the Holy Spirit? <laughs> he didn't want to do it. So anyways, we set up, we started releasing the kingdom. And again, this is the first time I'm doing it. I'm used to being in environments where you'd say Jesus and people identify with him and so they're on board. These folks, when we lifted up Jesus, we had a crew probably of about 10 guys that came up around me and just started mocking. Some guys were even shoving a little bit. It got hostile there for a second. And for two seconds, I was thinking, man, this is intimidating. But then the Spirit of the Lord came upon me. I'm serious. It was like night and day. I says, man, if they're going to be this bold about the way they're living and how they're doing life, I'm going to be even more undignified. And so I just leaned into it even more. And it was a really, really special moment. I think that particular one was special for my heart because it solidified something in me that he is the God that will show up in power. He, he yeah. has the, the, the <laughs> mighty strong arm and he'll come in every day of the week and, wow. and do what he wants to do. What do the guys end up doing? Yeah, so I wish that that was a, an amazing story, <laughs> but it wasn't. They kept mocking. But I, I think for me, that encounter was was really to stir and provoke something in me. Mm-hmm. It was to teach you perseverance. Yes, yes. And, that's and so important. Boldness is. Yeah. is a muscle, and that's what the Holy Spirit was was wow. teaching me. Yeah. The more I use it, the more I step out. Courage and step is a muscle. In. Yeah. yeah. Boldness is a muscle. Yeah. yeah. And I'm yeah. sure still a seed yeah. was planted in their heart. Yeah, Amen. Like, yeah. As much as they wanted to mock you that yeah. day, they're gonna remember yes. that when yes. the next person comes Amen. along. Seeds were planted. Of course, you're, you're talking about boldness and courage. I want to take you back to that New York subway. This was the, actually the first time I saw Ryan doing what he does. This will kind of help you understand what he does. It's totally different, but it's amazing God's using him in a powerful way. Let's watch. We give you all the Lord. We're just out here singing to Jesus, man. And no money. We can pray for you. All right. Jesus, we love you. Bless my brother. In the name of the Lord. Amen. Amen. 
Bless you, man. Jesus. 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 Hallelujah. 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 Gloria a Dios. Gloria a Dios. Come on, just sing it as loud as you can. We give you all. We I wanted you to see that because I knew that you would sense the presence of the Lord. And there's some of you watching that you need God right now in your life. And I just want you to just open up your heart and say, Jesus, I need you. I need you to help me. And I need you to forgive me. And, uh, and just ask him to come into your heart right now. It's just so simple, so easy. And uh, there's some of you watching and you feel the presence of God. And God's just touching you supernaturally right now. Just lift your hands up and receive what he has for you. To Haviland. Oh, I'm blown away. I'm from New York City, so I know that if you can penetrate the heart there, it can happen anywhere. You have a lot of people singing in subways, but what sets you apart is that you're bringing God in, and that's mm. incredible. What is God saying to people watching right now? That, you know what? It's time for us to allow him to use our lives, to not be afraid. He's really breaking off the fear of man. You know, we mm -hmm. all struggle with the fear of man, but I believe that Ryan is an example to us that you're not that you're going to go on the street and evangelize, but you can be a witness wherever you are. Amen. Amen. So good. Yes, I agree with that, that we are to be bold and courageous, just as you have demonstrated for us, and you're encouraging us to do that, so Thank we you. will. Yeah, the thing I love about your story is sometimes our greatest impact isn't from a big platform, but it's from the street or from a lowly place. And I love how you just obeyed the Lord and you just did what was right in front of you. And when you obeyed him, I feel like even now you're having probably a greater impact than all those years you were on big stages. So I love that. Your obedience is incredible. Rebecca. Just that to be completely surrendered to God and do not let the enemy intimidate you. He could have allowed that first encounter to do them in, but to actually persevere and let that boldness, like you say, be a muscle that you exercise as you continue to walk in the calling that he has for you. Amen. Cindy. And I'm, I'm just reminded the scripture says to go out into the highways and byways and compel them. Aww. And I believe as our life and our worship is a compelling force Amen. that will draw people into the kingdom. You know, Ryan has been um, asked to be a part of a very uh, big um, group that's very popular right now and doing a great work for the Lord, but he's chosen to continue doing what he's doing. I don't know what the Lord's going to open up. When I see you, I think about my friend Sean Foyt. Yeah. I told yes. Sean about you. He's like, I want to meet that guy. Yes. So I can see you doing something yeah. with him as well, but he's doing all these open air. And I just see that growing. Mm -hmm. Yes, you're going to continue to do the one-on-one, -on -one, but you're even believing for something. Is it in New York yeah. where people are going to come yeah. together? Yeah, we're asking the Lord to uh, bring the body from the pews to the streets. Yes. And again, it's not we're trying to get people to have a street ministry, but we're trying to get people provoked to yes. know that, uh, that they can have an encounter with the Lord in uncommon places. Yes. And if he comes in these uncommon places, if he'll do it in the New York street or Times Square, then he can do it at your job. He can do it at your, your college. He can do it at wherever. He, he wants to invade, and he's building the kingdom, establishing the kingdom through the body. New York City in May is what we're believing God for, a thousand people strong. I believe it's going to be more than that, but be praying Come for on. Brian. And um, we're just going to believe for an outpouring. I mean, and just keep your heart pure. Before God, take care of that precious wife and kids. Yeah. Yeah. She's a chiropractor, by the way. So uh -huh. chiropractor and preacher over here, worship leader. <laughs> Come on. But uh, what a great combination. Well, we are out of time. I want you to remember that you carry the Holy Spirit with you. And if you'll say yes to his plans, he's going to use you in remarkable ways. There's some of you like never really thought about like asking 
God what he wanted to do with me, but try that today. Some of you know God, but you've never thought, okay, God, I'm doing this. Is there anything specific you have for me to do? You may be shocked at what he has for you. If you're watching today, you want to say yes to God's plan for your life, or you prayed that prayer, invited Jesus into your heart. Call that number on the screen. I want to send you a free book. I want to encourage you. Those prayer partners are standing by, ready to encourage you. And I want you to discover what God wants to do through your life. I want to thank Ryan for joining us at the table. For more on his ministry, you can visit him on Instagram at R. Horton Worship. Let us know how much you enjoyed hearing from Ryan. Leave us a comment on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, or YouTube. Now, we couldn't let him leave without singing one more song. Yes. So here he is once again, singing a medley of Give Me Jesus, and I Love You, Jesus, Ryan Horton. Thank you, Lord. I love you more than the lights I I love you more than the flame of it. I'll trade your presence for all of it. I'll trade your presence for all of it. So I love you so much, I love you so much, oh.